The HBAR token is currently up over 5.5%, coming in at 5.8 cents. In this video, we're going to talk about Hedera, the token. What is going to drive the massive rise in value in the Hedera ecosystem? Uh, we're going to talk about what I think that one use case will be. We're also going to take a look at a Hedera chart. What are some key levels to keep an eye on if you're looking to add or decrease your position in Hedera, which we recommend uh, adding your position as the bull market gets underway. Uh, so let's jump right in. So this uh, here from newsbtc.com, Hedera developer community remained vibrant in quarter two. When will HBAR turn the corner? A couple of things from this article I do have highlighted. According to a quarter two 2024 review shared across X on August 19th, analysts noted improvements made in the last quarter, pointing out how the platform performed relative to Q1 of 2024 and the broader crypto ecosystem. The Scalable Ledger has over 75 full-time developers and over 190 monthly active contributors in their funding. You can see here shows their TVL. Well, this is in comparison to Ethereum. And then uh, this one is, it should be pretty interesting. So implementing HIP 540, will HBAR turn the corner beyond expansion into the decentralized physical infrastructure network, also known as DPIN? The platform uh, seeks to improve its token security further by implementing HIP 540. Once it goes live, developers can remove and modify administrative keys. This effectively means Hedera will boost security and trust, which is crucial development, especially as it builds its NFT ecosystem. But it's not NFTs that I believe will drive the value of Hedera up. But before I get into why I think that is, take a look at their core developers, right? This is a metric that's important to keep an eye on. Gives an idea of, hey, how many code commits do they have? How many people are coming into the ecosystem and looking to build solutions? You can see here, this is over the last 90 days, the green bar chart shows you the amount of code commits. And we've seen a pretty decent amount with the lowest being one. And our peak over the last 90 days came on Friday, August 16th with 44 code commits with current core developers sitting at around 92. And so for all of those people that are saying no one's building on Hedera, that is simply unequivocally false. We take a look at from the metrica.co uh, website, take a look at some of their TPS and other metrics. You take a look, uh, average transactions per second over 2,000 with their max coming in just shy of 3,600. And it gets broken down here to the far right-hand side. Uh, Unlike some uh, blockchains, you got to go find this information yourself, do a little bit of digging or a lot of digging sometimes. Uh, you can just go to this website. You can see, hey, how much of this came from created accounts? How much this came from NFTs, from fungible tokens, from smart contracts, from filing, and from crypto? You can see here 80,000 from crypto, uh, 100 and close to 170 million from the HCS and then NFTs and the other ones here as well. Take a look at some of their smart contracts down here. Account growth, uh, 6,800 accounts created. Uh, this was created accounts and then active accounts sitting at 7,618. Uh, fungible token summary, HCS. And I'll link this in the description of this video so you can take a deeper look for yourself if you'd like to. Uh, now, the one vertical I'm, I'm really intrigued and interested with when it comes to Hedera, among other things, right? You got Karate Combat, you got Potential Gaming, you got the Stablecoin Studio, you got the freaking governing body. The one I'm really, really interested in is going to be this institutional real world asset tokenization. So let's start here. Hedera and Copper, which is essentially an institutional custody partner for digital assets, they are partnering to further the institutional access to Hedera. It's pretty big. Copper will offer crypto, uh, crypto custody support for the HBAR token and enhance the blockchain network's decentralized finance capabilities via staking. Institutional investors can now stake their HBAR via validators of their choice, utilizing Copper's wallet infrastructure for DeFi transactions. The partnership also introduces institutional access to HBAR trading through Clearloop, which is Copper's multi-exchange settlement solution. Copper clients with funds in a decentralized finance vault will be able to interact with Hedera decentralized exchanges such as SaucerSwap, uh, accessing HBAR and HTS token utility. This functionality will be available through Ethereum-compatible Copper Connect. Uh, this is a quote from Shane Higdon, the co-founder and CEO of the HBAR Foundation. Quote, with Copper's integration, institutional investors can now enter the Hedera ecosystem with greater ease and confidence, right? 
is important. Confidence tells you that they believe in your product. Uh, real world asset tokenization, right? Hedera is very unique. Uh, it runs on the Hashgraph consensus. It's got the governing body with massive names, which we'll go over here in a second. But this is one vertical in the entire space that I believe is going to be absolutely huge. You got BlackRock putting up $500 million, uh, partnering with Ondo. We know Hedera with uh, Aberdeen. They launched, and Arcax, they launched a BlackRock fund on the Hedera network. Although it wasn't a true partnership with BlackRock, it'll allow Hedera and the network to truly show what they can do when people decide uh, which chain are we going with to tokenize some of our funds. Whether it's a government, whether it's an institution, whether it's a hedge fund, VC, whatever it is, you need security, you need speed, and you need support. And I think Hedera has all three. So this is from the Hedera.com website. We know they have LG as part of their governing body. They did a, a, a NFT and digital artistry demo with them. You can see down here, uh, RWA tokenization resources. So they have the HTS, which is the Hedera token service. Uh, enables configuration management and transfer of native fun uh, native fungible and non-fungible tokens. You have the Hedera Consensus Service, the HCS. Provides a secure, fast, and robust platform for tokenization. You have their Stablecoin Studio. Like This this doesn't get talked about a lot. We know stablecoins are going to be pretty big. A lot of the smartest people in our space believe that stablecoins are the true big utility use case for crypto. And Hedera has something where you can go in there and create your own stablecoin, leveraging uh, the Hedera network and the Hedera ecosystem, an open source software developer kit that simplifies the process of issuing stable coins using Hedera network, uh, Hedera network services. And then you have their token service security audit, right? We know Hedera puts security at the very forefront. Now you take a look at Hedera's council, right? We have LG, which I just showed you. They did their, their NFT little demo. We have Deutsche Telekom, also known as T-Mobile, one of the largest telecommunications company in the entire world. You have Boeing, you have Bitco, Avery Johnson. And what's, what's great about this, you have Dell as well. What's great about this is when you talk about institutions, tokenizing assets, right? Which chains are they gonna use? Well, if you sit on the governing council of Hedera, and let's just say you're... So name out here, your Australian Payments Plus or your WorldPay or your Standard Bank and you decide to tokenize something. Why would you go to a different chain versus using the chain that you sit on the governing council of with access to ecosystem funds of with direct lines of communication, assuming to the top brass at the HBAR Foundation and at HBAR at Swirl Labs, right? Mance Harmon, Deleman Bard. You have uh, uh, Eric Piscini who's been on our show a few times. And so that is what I'm most excited to see and what can happen. I think it's important to see also how the BlackRock tokenization, uh, how that's going to play out on Hedera as well. I think looking back, uh, looking forward 12 months, we look back to days like this, like why didn't we see this? Why didn't we see Hedera as a clear front runner to get some of these institutions to tokenize assets on their blockchain versus going to some other blockchain that hasn't proven itself? Uh, and then... Uh, as mentioned before, copper, right? Building the institutional standard for digital assets. Do you want to get into a little bit of price action for Hedera? Now, this is Hedera on the daily, right? And we were forming a nice head and shoulders. Well, not nice in terms of price action because these do typically tend to break to the downside. Outside of this one massive deviation, we had this, we had this almost perfect head and shoulders pattern, right? If we remove this, this was the... Uh, when, Black, when the fund was announced, the BlackRock fund was tokenized on Hedera. People thought it was a partnership. Price spiked, came back down. Outside of that, this head and shoulders pattern, it did play out. It broke below. We tried to come up and retest, but failed. We were off by a little bit, uh, by around, we were, came up to around 7.8 cents. And the target there would have been 9.2 cents. So when we start to rally from the Hedera token, right, I would expect... Um, I would expect long-term resistance to be right around this neckline, which depending on when this breakout happens, if it happens, let's say over the next week, you're looking at around 10 cents. If it happens further out, obviously that climbs up uh, like a ladder, but I'm going to remove this head and shoulders pattern and I'm going to throw on the Bollinger Bands, right? So we measure the volatility. Can we expect a big move, big move coming from Hedera? And you can see right here where we are right now, we saw these bands get extremely tight and it looks like we're breaking to the upside, right? You can see this big green candle. It did pierce the upper bound of our Bollinger Band. Now, how high can this thing go? 
I think the immediate resistance we're going to see is right around seven cents. That is where we topped out, broke above, reclaimed, and then dropped below again. Also, if we throw on our volume range profile, we'll see what kind of trading is happening at this level. And as you can see here, my friends, that 7.5, 7.8 cent level, massive amounts of volume. Now, will that volume be selling volume or will that volume be buying volume? That remains to be seen. But if things play out for Hedera, we believe this could be buying volume, especially seeing as how this daily candle has begun to break out. If there are our price action concepts here from Lux Algo. I mean, like if you've been sitting on the sideline waiting to get exposure to Hedera, well, what are you waiting for? Unless you do not believe in the project at all, which if you're watching the video, I highly doubt that. But what else are you waiting for? I mean, look at the last time we dumped, we, we got into this discount zone. We wicked all the way down to 4.4 cents. And what do we do subsequently? We rallied 30%. Look at this last time. We chopped sideways to the upper bound of this discount area. And what do we do from the bottom to where we are now? Up 15%. We are still close enough to this discount zone. And at the very worst, even if you get in and you get in a little too early, you're less than a penny off of the price, the, the absolute like ideal price that you would want to get Hedera at, which is that discount zone. You're less than a penny off. Are you willing to take the risk of waiting for a one penny better entry and then sit on the sidelines and watch Hedera run up to 10, then 12, then 15, then 25 cents, and then maybe see a blow off top. So that is what we're looking at. We're super bullish on Hedera. Let us know your thoughts in the comment section. Also, come check out our live show Monday through Friday at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We'll see you in the next one.